recently I converted this torch to run off uh, lithium polymer cells and powering uh, an LED. And what I use is a, a battery management system board uh, which makes sure that the batteries, the cells, are not overcharged or over discharged. But what it doesn't do is to is to balance the pack. Now every time I make one of these projects there's a comment that's left to say well how, how are you going to balance charge them and my argument has always been that provided that the cells are, are well matched to begin with and charged to the same voltage and that the application isn't too demanding like uh, it's not the same as uh, radio control quadcopters and things where the the cells are being abused so for example in this pack here if we measure the individual cells 194198 4198 4197 4198 so they are within you know, 0.01 of a volt of each other and as I say in this particular application they're all going to be discharged and the battery management system will kick in um, if the if the voltage gets too too low however there's always that nagging suspicion over time will the cells become unbalanced and I believe now I've found uh, a solution uh, which we're going to try today and see how well it works this is the little balance board that uh, we're going to be testing and it's clearly marked on the, on the back uh, where to connect the individual cells to make up the 16.8 volts. Uh, what happens is that uh, as each cell comes up to its charge voltage of 4.2, um, the little circuit here will switch this uh, resistor in. The resistor is 43 43 ohms and therefore will draw about 100 milliamps so as each cell comes up to its 4.2 volts this will switch in now to test this before we fit the balance board I'm just going to discharge the individual cells to um, different voltages to represent them being out of balance so with my DC load here I've set it to a cutoff of 3 volts and 1 amp. So the first cell here I'm going to discharge to 3 volts representing empty and the next cell I'm going to discharge to say around about um, 3.5 so that's maybe 75% discharged and then this guy to 50% and the fourth cell will be fully charged so that's about as out of balance uh, as we're going to get so I'm just going to start that process off and then we'll fit the board once it's complete so the values here uh, discharging at one amp the first is the voltage and then the ampere hours and the watt hours so the voltage on the cell 3.49 so when that gets down to 3 this will alarm and switch itself off and then I'll discharge the next cells. Using the DC load I have now completely unbalanced uh, the pack and have no load on at the moment so if we just check the, the voltages the first cell is at 3 so that's fully discharged the second cell is at 3.7 so I'm saying that's about half the third cell is at 3.99 and the fourth cell is fully charged. I think we can agree that um, the pack is seriously out of balance now so I'm going to get this balance board soldered on. Let's get soldering. So I carefully soldered the uh, the balance board on and uh, as a precaution if you're going to do this uh, remove the cells first. These connections here are very tight and one slip of the soldering iron and uh, the magic smoke would come out take care if you're going to do that and now we're not under load or under charge we'll just probe on the on the board here so we can see our first cell that's the the charged one 
and moving up to 8.15 and the last cell there so 14.9 so yep they are most definitely still out of balance in terms of the charger for this project I recently reviewed this uh, variable voltage power supply which goes from 9 to 24 volts now to charge the batteries we will need to apply just a little bit over the 16.8 give it a little bit of headroom say 17 volts the wrinkle is that it's not constant current and for lipos um, you really need to to use a constant current source so what I'm going to do is just to add this little um, DC DC converter um, that has the ability to set um, a constant current so we're going to set the output voltage to 17 so the voltage on here will be say 20 you need at least two volts uh, difference between the input and output and I've put these uh, sockets on so that I can use the the same connections so that's going to be the first thing to do is just to, to quickly set that up so it's giving us 12 volts at the moment so if we can find our tweaky boo the three potentiometers on here you can disregard the the middle one for the moment and this one controls the voltage and this one controls the constant current and there are LEDs that indicate the, the various uh, stages so just got the OK light on there at the moment I do have a, a video where I've used this both as, as a battery charger uh, for a lead acid cell and also as a constant current source for an LED driver and as always uh, links are in the description so without further ado let's just get the voltage sorted So there we are at uh, 17 volts. Now to set the constant current, we're going to uh, first disconnect the, uh, the test leads. This one's common. And we've set the meter obviously to DC amps. The top one is the indication that it's in constant current mode. So with the far right hand potentiometer, now we need to adjust this output current down so it looks like about 100 milliampere's is the uh, the lowest that this constant current can go to and that's fine so having set the unit up we can now connect it to our batteries and uh, investigate the the state of charge so in the setup here now we can see our constant current charge the the light on there uh, plugged into the charging port uh, as i said that's 20 volts so we'll have 17 odd being fed into the battery management system this meter here is across the lowest voltage cell so that's going to be the last one to come up to uh, to voltage uh, obviously at the moment at 3.6 uh, just with this other meter now I'm going to show the other voltages that we have so not surprisingly our input voltage is the 16.19 so that, that will climb up to the 17 so at the moment the the center terminals which are the the charging connection and the battery terminals are reading the same on our board here you remember that the first cell uh, was was charged anyway so that's at 4.2 the second cell which wasn't quite so charged is now already up to 4.2 and I can feel that the resistors there um, are, are getting warm as they're loading the, the cells to avoid them being overcharged so the third cell now 4.13 and we know the last one is 3.6 we'll leave this now and watch this voltage as it gradually comes up towards the 4.2 to meet uh, to meet its partners it has taken several hours for the balance condition to be achieved but finally the lowest cell is up to 4.2 now and the balance board 
it's getting quite warm actually, I'm quite surprised. It's only 100 milliamps each, but uh, it soon, soon adds up. So just to, uh, for the avoidance of doubt on the meter here, we'll just measure the other cells. So the first cell, 4.2, second cell, 4.21, third cell, 4.1, well, 4.2. And we can see this one is 4.2, so no surprise that the, both the, uh, the charger connection and the battery itself are showing almost spot on 16.8. So all is good. We've uh, re-established balance on the connections. Uh, so that's the result, uh, not only for our, our power supply here, and for our additional constant current source uh, for the balance board too. So I think after some considerable time, we've actually found what is uh, the, the ultimate solution for, for charging these um, three and four cell LiPo packs. So uh, I should be buying more of these.